me get some energy in this building. Some Holy Ghost filled energy in this building. Amen. So again, uh, formally, Jay Bryan of BX Ministries, ABC, and I'm a Believers Council. I'd like to formally welcome you to Devil Proofing 2, the Guarded Team Conversations. I'm here with my brother, Cameron J. Logan tonight. Come on, please, come on, please put your hands together. Before I introduce what, what inspired this conversation and, and where we're gonna be going tonight, we, we pray that not only are the children fed, but also the whole body of Christ, so that includes the parents as well. Um, we believe that the word of God is enough for all of us, amen? So we can give your children what they need uh, as opportunity, as the opportunity is given to us to serve your young people or our young people, but we wanna make sure that parents are equipped and we all stand firm in making sure they're protected, amen? amen. All right, so without further ado, my brother Cam, how you doing, brother? I am doing well, bro. Awesome, I'm man. Well, doing well. My heart is beating uh, twice uh, as fast as it normally does because for one, I'm excited and for two, uh, this is a this is this is a weighty thing that we're gonna talk about. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 ready. Ready to get I'm into ready. it. I'm ready. Okay. So first and foremost, um, we want to discuss what inspired this conversation, how it came to be. For those who don't know, I get the opportunity to serve the youth here at ABC. Um, Cam himself, he he's been uh, a bit humble on his end, but he's been in the ministry for quite some time. Um, he served alongside his father, James Logan, Bishop E. James Logan. Please give me a little bit of background on that. All right, so uh, I'm a PK. If you don't know what PK means, it means preacher's kid, uh, born and raised in church my entire life. Uh, I was born in, literally born in. Um, my parents became, uh, they were a part of leadership and pastoral or, or leadership role, probably when I turned, I believe, one. So in 1991, they were ordained elders in their church, and then they became pastors in like 93, and then they be, they took over a campus location in 95 or 96. Yeah, my sister was born in 96, so 96. Um, so I've been in church literally my entire life. So primarily, I've been privileged to grow up primarily in my church, or my parents' per church, rather. It's God's church, but my parents' church, for those of you that are very spiritual and deep. Um, <laughs> so yeah, my parents have been pastoring for 36 years, and uh, in 2015, um, I was ordained and installed as an elder in the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as a youth pastor. And so I've been pastoring uh, youth since 2015. And then in 2020, my dad decided that he wanted me to, t to be his assistant pastor. So since 2020, I've been the assistant pastor and youth pastor and worship leader and media director and, 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 and all the things that come with being a PK. So yes. Awesome, awesome. It. So I just wanted to give the people an opportunity to get to know you for those who don't know you and a little bit of your background. Not that we need to qualify or quantify anything about ourselves. It's just simply a formality when you're in front of an audience, right? Um, to understand where we come from and why we're doing what we're doing tonight. Um, first of all, let's give honor to our pastor, Pastor G is in the house. His lovely wife, Sister Sabatha is in the house somewhere around here serving as usual. Man, all of the deacons, all of the elders, everybody was here, mother, Obviously, my wife is here tonight, Cam's wife. My wife, my, my only wife. Hey, shout out. The mother, my only child. I always shot want to say that as a preacher. The mother, my only child. Awesome. Yeah, we got Xander here. We got Izzy, Savannah, and Jeremiah here. So we love you, family. We love you, Pastor. Thank you for this opportunity. So getting right into it, last summer, we, annually, we do a youth conference. Um, and this particular uh, youth conference of 2023, we had this grand opportunity to get our very own pastor to do one of his uh, internationally known DVD recordings. And he decided he wanted to do Devil Proofing 2. And the subtitle was The Guarded Team. And, and the moment he shared the title with me, it always, it immediately illuminated. Um, as far as like my care and concern for our young people in this generation for many different reasons that we're going to get into tonight um but in particular it weighed on me for some time and i may mention it of it to him and i said man because i wanted to talk about influencers and just the new wave of how things are going 
and we know we have you have a little bit uh, of experience in that area um and, and i mentioned it's a pastor and he just took it and ran with it um because even though he's tenured seasoned um older wiser and has a a, a vastly growing uh church and ministry he never loses his foot of the pulse of the of the youth and it's, it's, it's extremely admirable to me um, and it's very encouraging to me because I believe that in this present time, even in 2024, it is something that isn't paid as much attention to. So to have a leader uh, of his magnitude, a prophet, a modern day prophet, to never take his heart, to never take his mind uh, and, and the service of ministry off the youth, I just I feel very privileged to be a part of that and, and to be serving alongside that. And so he was able to come and pardon to our young people. We did this elaborate production. Some of the set that you're seeing today was a part of that production. And I was just enamored by the message. And I got a chance to watch it again um, the other night just to, to, to re-abreast myself. We talked about that. You did so the, the same. And I think we both came to the understanding quickly. Um, he established very fast what the common theme would be for the message which was the future of our young people. And, and in doing so, he went through a series of things that he touched on, but a lot to do with was very, very, very particular to their identity, and that was their sexuality. How important it is to remain a virgin, how important it is for young men to understand what it means to carry the seed in this earth and what God intended for it to be. Um, I wanted you to kind of express or give a little bit about what you got from when you view the DVD. Yeah. Um to, to piggyback off that, I, I, I love uh, the fact that, that I call him dad. Dad continues to keep, uh, he keeps the main thing the main thing, but there are certain things that you have to be laser focused on. And youth ministry and children's ministry is, is huge. Uh, I don't know if you all know this, but studies show that nine times out of ten, people will join or not join a church based on the youth and children's ministry. And, and parents, uh, good, good ones, <laughs> that is, P good parents look for ministries where their children and their young people are going to be poured into. And so f the fact that you all have that here, I don't want you to take that for granted. Because, because, because like, like it was stated in the, in the video, you're thinking about your child's future. And so... When we protect our children from the traumas that we experienced, the devil doesn't like that. He's upset, he's angry, he's, he's frustrated, he's mad, right? He, the devil was always going after the seed of, of the man and the woman. And anytime we can do whatever we can to devil-proof our children, to protect their gates, their ears, their eyes, their mouth, their, the things that they touch, the things that they're exposed to at an early age, they won't grow up and have those images in the back of their mind as they're trying to focus on the things that God has for them in their future, in their purpose, in their destiny. And so the key focus of the video that I saw was the future. When you, when you look to a future, when you, are, when you set your mind on things above, when you set your mind on things ahead, doing the things of God, there are certain things that you, will, you won't do now because you're focused on your future. Like, I, I can't do that now. I don't want to do that now because I'm focused on my future. I can't be in a relationship now because that's going to affect me in my future. I don't date now that I'm 12 because that's going to affect me in my future, right? How many of you wish you had parents that didn't let you date when you was a teenager? I mean, just writing letters and... Do you like me? Check the box. <laughs> yes or no. Right? Like, come on, let's be real. You wish you didn't experience some of the heartache and heartbreak at an early age because that, uh, that's, that's trauma. Yeah, that's right. On a certain scale, that's trauma. Yeah. We people have people that grow cook. up and then they get podcast equipment and then you got the red pill community and you got a bunch of bitter, traumatized young men that dog women talk crazy about women. They're, they have no authority over them. They have no pastor. They have no leadership. And they're teaching young men out here that feel just like them 
how to treat a woman, what a woman should be doing, who should who the, uh, the woman should submit to. Like, brother, you not submitted to God. How you expect a woman to submit to you? Preach, Cam. Yeah. So we have to be mindful of our children's future. And, you know, it's, it's taking me on another level because I have a child now. And so I'm constantly thinking about my son's future. Because the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's, children's children. children. Amen. So if I'm going to be a good man, I got to think about not just my future, not just Xander's future, but Xander's children's future. You're talking good. Let me take you here. So I shared this scripture with you, and there's a reason why. Uh, it's 1 Peter 5, verse 8, and it says, Be sober, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9 says, Whom resists steadfast in the faith. There is another translation, not important, but it said, Guard your faith, right? So resist steadfast in the faith. Guard your faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in, brethren that are in the world. And the reason why... That scripture illuminated to me is because everything you're saying requires an action on, on behalf of the church. So we know there's a history where our young people, whether that was my generation or the generation before or your generation, if we know that there's a history established there where some mistakes were made, then at some point somebody's got to step up and say, okay, we'll be the ones to change the culture. We'll be the ones that take the message that is devil proofing and actually apply these things on a consistent basis so that we can effectively make sure they have the futures that God intended for them to have. So what's the heart of the matter? And if it's truly about their future, then we want to encourage the parents to more so partner with us as opposed to standing against us. If you are having issues with being inconsistent, guess what we all do? But that's why we have a fellowship healthy fellowships like ABC, Amen. where we can come together and we can confide in one another, we can pray for one another, we can encourage one another, and we can advise one another, and we can show up here and get taught the same thing so that when our kids are hanging out with one another, it doesn't sound like they're speaking two different languages. Yep. So if we're saying, if we're saying no to Teen dating, why? What are the, some of the pre precautions? Well, it, it does stop heartbreak early. It does stop temptations sexually early. It does stop cross-pollination of what you believe or what I believe, especially if you're, you're befriending someone who doesn't come on a consistent basis. If we are attending the same fellowship and we see you once a month or once every other month, nine times out of ten, I'm advising my kid and we'll stand flat-footed and let you know that they can't hang out with one another. But watch this. It's the barrier that you placed up, not the barrier that we placed up. If we know that we have an enemy that is walking around trying to devour our children, then why wouldn't we band together and make sure they are properly guarded, especially if we know we are under sound teaching? Amen. Well, if I, if I may Please. interject there, you know, um, we're in two different regions uh, geographically. Yes, we are. Not spiritually. Amen. My God. <laughs> that went over y'all head. <laughs> so so y'all in the Bible Belt. Did y'all know that? Y'all yeah. in the Bible Belt. So up north... It's a, little, it's, a little, it's a little different it up is. there. It's a little Remember, different I'm from there. Detroit now, so I, yeah, okay. I know where you're going. So, yeah, right, go so it's a little different up there. So, so if, if I may, uh, uh, just for the sake of, of uh, you know, vulnerability, um, it's, it's key what he's saying about the partnership with the parents. Because I tell my youth all the time, and it's not really, I, I tell my youth, but I also really stress with the parents. I said, don't get mad at me for something that your child does when you bring them four times a year. Talk that talk. Number one, I only get them for X amount of hours a month. So we have our youth ministry uh, once a month on a Sunday. So, so I get your child once a month on Sunday. 
and we have, you know, different fellowships and things of that sort. And you expect me to be the, the sole uh, leader of your child's soul? And half the time, they bringing you to church because they want to be with me. Now, there was another point in time in, in uh, the, the ministry of our church, uh, pre-COVID, uh, the devil just did a number on folks during COVID up north. Because, you know, we, we're, we live in pharmaceutical land where, where we are. Northern Illinois, pharmaceutical, I mean, Abby, uh, maybe I shouldn't say names, but all the pharmaceutical <laughs> companies, they reside where we live. And a lot of our church members work in these places. So, uh, <laughs> y'all praying for me? And so, and so, and so, and so, uh, COVID did a number on, on the church, but, but there was a period in time where we had over three to 400 youth coming every week. All right, three to 400 youth coming every week. And a lot of them, they were going to church, but then they were going home and they were seeing a different message. They were going to church, and then when they would go kick it with their friends and go to a teen club or go to the club or whatever, whatever, they would see leaders of other churches. So now, I'm supposed to be coming up to you to the altar for prayer, but I saw you at the club last night. This is why it's important that those of us that are leaders, which is all parents are leaders, and the leadership of the church live a life that lines up with what we do on Sundays. Amen. Because when you don't, when you live a double life, you grow up and Barna Group calls it the mosaics. These are the people of my generation that grew up in church, but they don't want anything to do with church. They left the church. They doing whatever they want to do because why am I going to go there when people are in there being fake and phony? Mama, don't tell me what to do because you ain't living right. And so now you're putting pressure on me as the youth pastor to make sure that they're on the up and up, they're, they're reading their word. Like you have to establish that for your children in your home. Because you with them every day. So if I'm teaching them about why uh, uh, hip hop, rap, this music is so trash and this music is making your kids want to kill themselves and commit suicide and, and smoke and drink and do drugs and Xanax and pills and drinking and all this stuff. But you let them listen to it because they in sports. and Well, it, you know, it ain't going to hurt nobody. Like, like it, 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 it breaks my heart as a youth pastor. It breaks my heart because I can only do so much. We can only do so much. So please, like the Bible says, I beseech you, brethren, please, please, please consider the future of your children. Consider the future of your children. I'll say this last thing and we can move on. You know, my dad said something to me that like hurt my feelings to the core uh, one time when I was on punishment. <laughs> but it was so true. He said, he said, son. He said, I love you, but the way you acted, I don't like you right now. He said, he said we, we're not friends. And it hurt my feelings. And then after two years when I got off punishment, <laughs> when I got off punishment, he explained it to me. He said, son, he said, we cool, like you my boy. He said, but we not friends. He said, because I have to teach you things and you're not going to like it. I'm, and I don't like it. You used to say, this is hurting me more than it's hurting you. No, it's not, sir. <laughs> I, I, just got, I just got my tail whooped. <laughs> this did not hurt you. <laughs> but, but as you grow older and as you mature, you realize, like, there are certain things. You cannot be friends with your children. Amen. Because the minute that you correct them... Now they don't want to be in the house no more. Dad was saying it in the message. Oh, I can't stand this house. I hate this house. I can't wait to leave. That's what happens when you don't establish boundaries and standards in your home. You got your kids thinking they're your friend, 
when really you're the guardian. You're the one that's supposed to protect them. You're the one that's supposed to teach them, instill into them what God wants you to instill into them. The Bible says that children are like arrows. You have to guide, you have to aim, and then you got to release. There's going to come a point in time in your life as parents where you're going to have to release and let your child go out into the real world, and you got to trust that whatever you put in them is in them when they have to make tough, difficult decisions. Amen? Amen. 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 Well said, well said. So we, we showed uh, a couple of different videos at the top of this conversation, and let me provide context as to why. Um, not only were they uh, viral moments early on this, in this year of 2024, um, but the conversation surrounding them didn't include young people. Everybody's up in arms about their style or their form of Christianity being incorrect or correct, or whether or not we're supposed to put our mouths on God's prophets in, whether or not uh, it's okay for Christians to let their hair down, or whether or not, but nobody is considering the young and the impressionable. The ones that are making the most use of the internet. Matthew was with Jesus. Mark was with Jesus and even John. But there was one gentleman that was not walking with Jesus the way Matthew, Mark, and John did. And it is the only one that literally came to Christ as an eyewitness the way we do in this day and time, and that was Luke. Because of his education, he had the opportunity to do research, gather information, and go to other eyewitnesses and develop his own truth, I'm sorry, not his own truth, excuse me, his own belief based on the way we do by the preached word of God, by the testimony of other believers. And that's mind-blowing to me that he would be considered one of the Gospels. Why am I using that? Because with the internet, secondary to the ear, the first thing they do is they see. So before we have a pastor playing songs like Walk It Out or Swag Surfing in the Service, what they see is what's supposed to be a representation of God's leadership. Yep. All right, so what's the problem, Cam? Why, why can't a pastor swag surf? Why can't a pastor walk it out? Well, for one, the lyrics suggest we smoking and drinking. So are we saying that now we are listening to men and women of God or, or, or of faith speak God's truth while they're under the influence of something that completely disarms them? So you don't have to be in your right mind to deliver a word, so I don't have to be in my right mind to receive it. So therefore, we can conclude that all of this is based in confusion anyway, right? And who's the author of confusion, church? So why does it take so much conversation around this? while neglecting the young people. So I'm a young person, I log on, I'm familiar with these songs, my parents are telling me it's wrong, my youth uh, leaders are telling me it's wrong, but I see someone else indulging in this practice as if it's okay. But the entire conversation is based on style. The entire conversation is just based on whether or not we wanna accept it based on it being a new era, or it's not the old days. Truth be told, brother, I miss the old days. Amen. So if, okay, I won't disrespect them. If Pastor William Murphy is giving everyone a license for the sake of a message to use vulgar, profane music to win souls in the video, y'all seen it, right? He said, nobody can outsoul win him. And who can lay claim to 150 souls? Didn't he leave the 99 to go after the, the So if it's 150 souls that you claim gave their life to Christ, where's the video footage of that that went viral? That's right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> What is not 
widely or popularly understood is that it was not 150 souls that gave their life to Christ. It was an invitation to join a dream center. A community. He kept saying community. No gospel preached. No offering of soul salvation. But membership. So his focus that night while he was swag surfing and walking it out was on an audience, not soul saving. And how does this, if you can speak to, how does this mess with our young people? Well, I'm a Bible nerd. So the Bible says in Ezekiel 44, 23. Now you have to understand what's going on uh, in the entire chapter, because if you just provide no context to text, you'll end up confused. All right, in Ezekiel 44, they were commanded to build a tabernacle, okay? And there was a delineation or a separation between what was holy ground and what was the outer courts, which were considered not holy ground. Now, verse yeah. 23, it says, they, who is they? The priest shall teach my people the difference between what is holy and what is common, what is ceremonial, ceremonially clean and unclean. It was the priest's job to teach the people what was holy and what was common. We as leaders and preachers and pastors of God's sheep have a responsibility to teach them the difference between the holy and the profane, not mix the two. Amen. So when you mix the two, now you create what, what Pastor J. Brown already said, confusion. And now you have people that are not clear on what is holy and what's unholy. And so, like you already said as well, you didn't lead them to Christ anyway because you got 150 people that are confused about what's holy and what's common. So if you're creating confusion, it's not God. You didn't lead them to Christ. You led them to you. You didn't preach Christ because I don't have to come up here and add anything else to the word of God because you can just preach Christ alone and folks get saved. It happens all the time. Okay. Now, Jesus says in Revelation, he said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. You decide whatever people argue all the time. Well, what does it mean by hot or cold? You decide. You, you pick in your mind whether you want to be hot or cold, right? But he says you're lukewarm. Like lukewarm water, if it's supposed to be hot or cold, it's disgusting. Lukewarm food, lukewarm leftovers. Some of y'all was still eating Thanksgiving food. That food has passed its expiration date. It's disgusting. And in that time, when you drank water that was not hot or cold, you can literally cause yourself to be contaminated or get sick. There you go. So Jesus says, y'all making me sick. That's how I'm, I'm interpreted. Don't. <laughs> this, 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 this is how I interpret it. So you're literally causing what you want to be salvation. You're causing people to get cancerous ideas about who Jesus is. You're polluting the gospel. You're polluting salvation. You're creating division amongst people's homes. Mom, dad, well, William Murphy is doing X, Y, Z. That ain't right. And then if we're going to go back, right, a lot of what God has allowed us to do today is to, is to provide context to why some of our parents growing up just would tell us to shut up or don't do it. Or why? Because I said so. Right? Well, you can ask us why, and we'll give you an in-depth explanation why. Well, because it's going to lead to this, 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 and this. And if you keep going, it's going to lead to this. <laughs> right? So we don't want you to do these things because we want you to have a deeper understanding of your future. Yeah. Amen. And when we don't provide context to people's future and break down the scripture and be a biblical-based a biblical ministry then you don't raise carnal Christians who will want to go and seek out churches like that. Right, right. Because if we're going to be honest, 
uh, the folks that are really, really engaged in, in online activities, I know the millennials and you know, some of y'all, y'all 75 years old, y'all got Facebook pages and stuff too. Uh, but, but Gen Z, they consume so much screen time, it's like nothing else we've ever seen. So it's really Gen Z and they don't even know Walk It Out. They don't know some of these songs. So they think you lame anyway. William, they think you lame anyway. Like, what, what is it? What are they doing? And then you got the people that's on the front row doing the dance, and you think you winning souls, and they think you stupid. Like you said in the, in the video, uh, if people are saying stupid stuff, no, they think what you did was stupid. How can we win the world trying to be like the world? That, that's a very good question. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? If you remember when we played the videos at the beginning, at the end of the, the collage, there was two young men having a conversation. Wiley, we don't know who they are, but if you have a conversation with some of these kids in here, they do. One gentleman went, goes by the name Montel Fish. He initially started off as a Christian singer-rapper guy. The other gentleman was an a R&B artist by the name of Dan Daniel Caesar. Had a couple of popular songs. If you're into R&B music on the low <laughs> or <laughs> on the high, you probably know who he is. The interesting thing about this, was very common when I was coming up in a church when I was a little bit younger, is that most of the musicians or highly uh, talented people would eventually go secular. And so these two gentlemen did just that. The title of their conversation, it's a 20 minute YouTube video, is God or the Devil. And so what happens when we decide that we're not gonna stick to the way God designed this thing to be, then we allow them to propose that question with full confidence. So you got a, a gentleman by the name of Montel Fish, within the last year and a half, he made a huge 360 on all of his Christian audience. He's amassed about three, 400,000 of, of people following online, and everybody went crazy on him. But what they didn't pay attention to is that a year before this happened, in this video, he admitted that someone DM'd him and said, hey, the Lord told me to reach out to you and let you know that in a year, you're gonna make a very bad and terrible decision that's gonna lead you to destruction. And then he admits in the video that it's the season that he is in. Faithless. Jealous of his girlfriend because she doesn't believe in heaven or hell. And he's jealous that he can't land on a solid truth for himself. But Pastor William Murphy was walking it out. The other gentleman, Daniel Caesar. He made a statement such as this. He had a moment where he woke up one day cam and he decided i'm okay if i go to hell he said that on the video why will we sit back if that is an example broadly speaking of what our youth are going through why will we sit back and allow a pastor to seemingly okay mixing the sacred with the profane if we have young people who are confused about what the truth is. But we got these videos of these people, and, I, and that's very small. Very, those, those clips we show, man, there's so many of them out there, it is just heartbreaking. But our kids are exposed to it. If your child has a device or a phone, they're exposed to it. So you need to be vigilant. We need to be vigilant. We need to have these conversations as often as God would allow it as often as we are led to do it so that we can keep each other encouraged and informed. Amen. You don't know who Montel Fish is, but I do. So I'm telling you about it. You don't know who Daniel Caesar is, but I do. So I'm telling you about it. Look, There's no reason for us to deliberate time and time again and then not be able to come together and provide some type of resource and understanding for a plan of action to make sure that our teens stay guarded. Amen? Amen. So, in the DVD, 
there's a heavy, heavy presence of making sure our kids understand what is involved in sexual activity. When I was coming up, not only was it a heavy presence of say no to drugs, but there were just, it was just information for, for safety. It was information for abstinence. And now we're in a time where you can't find it anywhere. And, and dare I boast in the Lord and, and not in ourselves, but I don't hear much of the church talking about it outside of ABC. How are we expecting them to carry this very, very, very life-defining responsibility if we don't give them the information they need as soon as possible? Yep. So he was able to touch on some statistics, whether they are current or up-to-date or not, they're just staggering anyway. The average loss of virginity between male and female is 17 years of age. That's terrible. I'm going to tell you why. If you're sexually active, we know that that is what God designed for procreation. That's right. So sex leads to a woman being pregnant, right? Isn't that how it works? I got three. You got one, right? Got one. Okay. We need to tell our teens that. Amen. It's not just designed for pleasure. Amen. It's designed for connection between a man and a woman who has stood before God and vowed each other to each other until death do them part. Share a little bit of what it looks like when we just let our kids haphazardly stumble upon this, this topic of sex. Yeah, so porn is huge. Um, when you're unaware of what's going on on your children's devices, uh, you're not monitoring times, you're not monitoring uh, applications, you're not going through their Instagram, their TikTok, and uh, I didn't know this. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know that when us millennials got off Snapchat, I thought like it was done. But y'all kids be using Snapchat. And with Snapchat, if you don't know, you can send a picture, and in 15 seconds after that said individual views it, the information is gone. So people are exchanging pornography between each other at very young ages and stages, okay? So think about when you was growing up and you first were introduced to pornography, it was through some type of magazine. I'm just being honest about my testimony. I was at grandma's house, my grandpa, he had a, a room. They built the deck out, papa had a room, okay? He had a TV and he had a bunch of magazines and we wasn't allowed to go in there. Oh, but when he went on his camping trips and fishing trips, we wanted to see why we couldn't go in there. Scavenger hunting. And all of a sudden, boom, you're exposed. Now, children are exposed when they're three years old because you just want them to shut up crying. So you turn on Bluey or you turn on Coco Melon or you turn on, uh, uh, what's the other one now where they just introduce a same sex couple? Uh, uh, uh. I can't remember if one of, uh, and then, you know, Gracie did, there was a trans, you know, with colorful braids and stuff. Like we, ha the devil is not slick. He uses the same tactics. He just uses them in today's vernacular. So we have to do our job. I don't know about y'all, but my dad, when I first got my cell phone, my dad went through my text messages because during that period, text messages cost money. Every, every text. Every text costs money, right? And so we didn't have a texting plan. So he, you know, he very politely in his military uh, and street way, he said, look, if you go over the bill one more time, I'm gonna rip your arms off and beat you with them. <laughs> and then he began to ask me questions about things that I had said that only I know I said. And I was like, how do you know this? And he showed me the phone bill with all my text messages. My dad was not afraid of going through my stuff and he wasn't worried about losing me as a friend because he's my father. Y'all gotta be willing to go through y'all kid's phone. Ain't no passcode. You're not locking the door to the bathroom. You're not locking the door to your room because Preach, I need to come in here at any moment because I don't know what you're doing. 
It's been quiet too long upstairs. What's going on? Let's just be real. When you expose the devil, he got to run somewhere. Right? So also, we have to understand that it, there's a saying that I say, and it's everything is spiritual. Can y'all say that with me? Say everything is spiritual. Sex is spiritual. Sex is not, because dad said it in the video, it ain't just so you can feel good because the first time you do it, number one, you're not going to know what you're doing. Number two, it's not going to feel good. In the Bible days, do you know what they used to do to see if you consummated the marriage? They would take your sheets out in the streets and they would hold them up like, oh, yep, they did it. They married for real now. Because they understood that the exchanging, now if this is too gross, y'all can stop me, but there is an exchange that happens. I, I, Dad looked at me and Sarah got away. There's an exchange that happens. <laughs> Fluids. That is a covenant. That is a vow. That is a pledge. And when you make a pledge, you can't just break it just because you don't like them no more. Or y'all did it. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we did it now. No, 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 no. In God's eyes, you married. So if you just going around and you're not teaching your sons and daughters, because a lot of the church like to just blame it on the, the, yeah, you need to just learn how to zip it up and so on and so forth. No, no, no. It's some, it's some predator young ladies out here too. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because of things that they're seeing on the TV screen. Meg Thee Stallion, Cardi B. Uh, it's like every female rapper that they let out has to have some type of sexual presence. There's a person by the name of Sexy Red that ain't even sexy. At all. And the industry is planning these people just like they planted Lil Nas. As you know, his number one audience is children. The devil's coming after your kids, coming after their sexuality. They say sexuality doesn't, doesn't define us. But then you ask them who they are, and they tell you, I'm they, them. The Bible says God created male and female. That's what it said. Is that what your Bible says? Is your Bible different than my Bible? Well, there's a pastor up in Oklahoma that said that he wished... <laughs> And the guy had made a different decision. <laughs> I wish he was more plain. What are we doing? <laughs> you know, um, well put, well said. But let's not take the onus off of us parents. Yes, we got the Cardi B's, the Sexy Reds, the, Car the, the Megan Thee Stallions. By the way, uh, uh, William Murphy, he was doing like a, a drive-by car thing. He was playing Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah, I just saw that one too. And the so he's, it's a common theme for him. He loves it. Yeah. So it's on us. I, I have to engage with my sons. I have to engage with my daughter in a way where it's defining and influential. Your, your kids can't view, our kids can't view us as a stand-in manager. Right? I'm in management. They act like kids, but they're adults. And I only have the management responsibility for a certain amount of time of a day. I have a shift, if you will. Parenting can't be minimized to a shift. Amen. It has to be as constant as your ability to breathe, walk, and experience this life the way God designed it. There has to be a constant checkup on their phones, computers, laptops, all of their devices. There has to be conversation. Pastor G spoke about this in a DVD. He was teaching our young people about prudence, taking thought for the future, and why it is so important to make decisions now that, that positively, Correctly, righteously, all of the above on the good side affect your future. 
The way that they learn how to do that, parents, is through us. There's a series of decisions they have to see us make in order for them to mimic it. But, but Pastor, he, he talks about kids making decisions effectively for their future and what that looks like. And so he runs down a slew of things. And we're wrapping up here in about 10 minutes. And a couple of those things is this. The internet. I'm going to expose some things now. Either remember them, parents, or you can write them down, whatever you feel. There are certain names and people of influence that you need to be made aware of. There's a guy by the name of DJ Academics who has a strong pulse on hip-hop culture and popular culture at large. And he has been used by multiple platforms. Spotify, Vimeo. Is it Vimeo? Okay. He has multi-million dollar contracts with these platforms. Guess what his job is, church? He streams 16 to 20 hours a day engaging our children. Now, I'm speaking abroad. I'm hoping we have a better handle on that. So that's DJ Academics. Then we have another guy who's emerging by the name of Kai Sinet. Got arrested some time ago because he was able to do an announcement in New York, ran to some certain area in New York and caused a massive riot. And the entire celebrity entertainment community rallied for him because he was arrested for inciting a riot. Nobody should have this type of influence on our children. So we got DJ Academics, we got Kai Sinat, and then we got the devil reincarnated, Adam 22. What he's done over the last 10 to 15 years is that he's taken what, what some will refer to as black culture, which is filth of hip hop. He platforms them, talks about gang culture, porn co co uh, pornography, and, and pretty much nothing is off limits. In fact, he pimps his wife. He boasts of making 15 plus million dollars last year for allowing his wife to be with another man on camera and sold it. And there's so many more, but those are the three biggest names. Adam 22, DJ, Academic, DJ Academics, and Casanet. Go through your children's phone immediately and make sure they're not being entertained by these three individuals, at the very least. So, we're having this conversation, not only to inform, not, to, not only to encourage, but empower, but to lift the name of Jesus as well, amen? Amen. But this scripture rings loud to me for several reasons. And I'm reading from the Bible because I want the kids to see that. Yes, we love devices, I have them. I have a phone, Bible app is on that, iPads, all of that is great. Cam's using the iPad, he's doing an excellent job. But we need to see this as well. It slows it down. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, action, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. This is, this is protocol. This is advice. This is telling you how you should approach your entertainment. Cam, <laughs> I'm going to let you close it out. At the end of the DVD, please, Devil Proof It 2, The Guard of Teen. If you don't have it, you need to get it. I'm sure Pastor G is going to talk about it some more. But at the end of the main message, Pastor G talked about the areas to be guarded. What does that look like for our young people going forward as we close? So I have uh, two, two scriptures. One uh, is a short one. The Bible says, how can a young man keep his way pure? Yes, sir. By taking heed to the word of God. You know, I, I tell... Um, the young people that I have the privilege of pastoring all the time, I said, you know, it's very difficult to sin when you read your Bible and pray every day. Amen. It's, I mean, even, you know, even as an adult, like it's, it's very difficult to fall into temptation and sin when you know you just spent time with God. It's like, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't want to upset God. You know, and, and, and I, think, I think we don't need to be necessarily like 
fear mongered into serving God, but we need to have a healthy fear of the Lord. I believe, I believe back in the day, people had a healthy fear of the Lord. Like, oh, don't let me move away, but you get, for you get struck down, right? We have to bring that that healthy fear of the Lord back. Secondly, is this the Bible says this in Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four through fourteen. Is it okay if I read some Bible? It's just bear with me. Deuteronomy six. 4 through 14. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. My dad tells me all the time, son, guard your heart. Don't allow your children to listen and watch. and Don't allow their gates to be to be tampered with by just anything because you need to protect their hearts and you shall teach them he says and these words that i command you today shall be on your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to you with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of good things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. And when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Did God bring us out of some things and then set us up? and prepare a better future for us? Did God put you in places that you didn't work as hard as you should have? Did God give you things that you were not qualified to have? Did you get a position of power that you were not qualified for because God was looking out for your future? Because he knew you were going to raise children in the fear and admonition of the Lord so that when they get old, they will not depart from these truths that we learn in the word of God. This is the best thing that we can do for our children is to make them fall in love with the word of God. Before, as a child, I was growing up on, on Saturdays, I used to think that was my day to kick it and have fun. My dad would say, uh-uh, don't turn the TV on, get in your Bible. I had to read the word as a young child, and then I had to write down what I learned, because repetition helps you learn, it helps you retain the information that you learned. Another thing that maybe parents, we should all do. Before I left for school every day, my dad would tell me, remember who you are. If we're talking about identity, if we're talking about knowing what our purpose and our plan is that God has for us, we have to instill in our children who they are. It is your job to partner with the ministry of the house to establish their identity in Christ. Amen. I pray this bless you. Amen. So we'll leave you with this. It's 1 Timothy 4 and 12. It says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and in purity. Amen. All right. You deserve all I am. Enter into worship. Throw away all my plans. I surrender my will. Yeah. 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 Hey, why you acting like you know?